So what is graph Laplacian? So it's usually defined as d minus a. Okay. So is is graph Laplacian symmetric? For undirected graph, is it symmetric? Right? It's symmetric. Okay. So what is each element Lij that is going to be Dij minus Aij, right? And if I sum this, so n, this is nothing but summation j1 through n Dij minus summation j1 through n aij. What is this quantity? d sub i and what is this quantity? So every every because it is a diagonal d capital D is a diagonal matrix. So it is going to pick up a number at di right which is basically the degree. So this is also going to be di. So this is essentially going to be 0. So the row sum of the Laplacian is going to be 0 and likewise the column sum. Okay. The other way to write this is if I multiply this Laplacian by a vector of 1s which is essentially what we are trying to do right. We are multiplying this by a vector of 1s transposing it with a vector of 1s. So what do you get 0 right. So that means 0 is a 0 is an eigenvalue of eigenvalue of L with vector of 1's corresponding eigenvector right. So sometimes we used so this, this kind of Laplacian is called unnormalized Laplacian and sometimes people use the normalized version of a Laplacian. So, normalized Laplacian and there are two ways to normalize this Laplacian. One is uh, so this is the normalized Laplacian essentially you pre and post multiply your original Laplacian with d in d inverse half d inverse half right. So that is your uh, or you have a random walk kind of Laplacian which is again a normalized Laplacian which basically you pre multiply it by 1 minus d inverse a. And if you are aware of uh, spectral clustering algorithms, let us say for the she and Malik had this normalized cut on the spectral clustering algorithm. So that algorithm by she and Malik or the normalized cut it uses this Laplacian and uh, ratio cut algorithm if you are aware of it actually uses this Laplacian this kind of Laplacian. So these these Laplacians are used in uh, spectral clustering algorithm. If you, I mean, if you are aware of it, so that's just a side thing. But so it is related to connectivity of the graph. So let's let's uh, let's. I mean, at least it will give you certain idea about the graph. So one thing that we have noticed is that L times is going to be 0. So the first question is, is 0 a simple eigenvalue? Okay. So let us let us take a look at this particular example where we have uh, this kind of graph, right. So let me redraw this graph or a version of it. Yeah. So the algebraic multiplicity is just 1. Okay. So if I have this kind of uh, graph, is, is the graph connected? No, right. So this is a disconnected graph. And in fact, number of connected components is 
true. Okay. Now, what does the adjacency matrix look like? So, you have a block diagonal kind of structure here, right? And degree matrix anyway, it is a diagonal matrix. So, degree matrix here is a 2, 2, 2 and 1 and 1 and all zeros, right? So, degree matrix anyway, a diagonal matrix. So, if I look at the Laplacian, which is D minus A, it is going to have this block diagonal structure. Okay. So, now if I multiply this Laplacian with the vector of let us say 1, 1, 1 and I do not care what have, what, what are the entries here, 0, I So, right or if I multiply this with the this and this, again you will get a 0, right. So, how many 0 eigenvalues are there? 2. So, 0 is not a simple eigenvalue anymore and there are 2 corresponding eigenvectors. So, in fact, number of so algebraic multiplicity of 2 uh, of the of 0 eigenvalue that is equal to the number of connected components algebraic multiplicity of uh, 0 eigenvalue of L is equal to number of connected components. Yeah. Hmm. So, you would have to yeah I mean it, it would be something else I am saying that or what you can do is uh, you can you can use 0 0 you just use 0 0 you not star you just use 0 0 yeah. Okay. So, these are two different eigenvectors for the same eigenvalue 0. So, the algebraic multiplicity is 2 and the number of connected components is also 2 and that is what Laplacian kind of tells you right. So, in fact, you can show that uh, so they are so all the eigenvalues. So, first of all Laplacian is a positive semi definite matrix all eigenvalues are. So, in fact, let me define 0 to be the first eigenvalue because it is anyway or the smallest eigenvalue this is less than equal to lambda 2 and so on. So, smallest non-zero eigenvalue. So, this is called, so we, we are going to usually denote this by lambda 2 because it is the second second small uh, second small eigenvalue lambda 2 of L and this is also called Fiedler eigenvalue. And this directly tells you about the connectivity of the graph. So, is the graph well connected, not well connected? So, what do we mean by the connectivity of the graph? So, even if let us say the graph is fully connected, right, or graph is connected, okay. So, there are multiple scenarios, right. So, if you if I consider examples, let us say a line graph, which looks something like this. and so on okay so this is a line graph so is this a connected graph right but what, what do you think like if i were to propagate information from one node to another node is it going to take a lot of time right because for the information to travel from here to here it's going to take a lot of uh, steps right whereas if i can consider another graph let's say star graph something like this. Now, in two steps you can reach from one node to any other node in just two steps. So, this graph you are going to say that this graph is better connected than the previous one right or the line graph is well connected. 
because you can reach from you can propagate information from one node to any other node in fewer steps and this gets captured through this Fiedler eigenvalue. So, what is diameter of a graph? So, what is a graph diameter? So, let us take an example I think it will be much clearer through an example. Suppose this, this is this is your graph ok and uh, let me So, in how many steps can you reach from let us say node 1 to node 2? So, 1 to 2 you can reach in one step, 1 to let us say 3, 2 steps, but you can also go through here right 1 through 5, 4, 3 and so on, but then we consider the minimum value because at we are guaranteed to reach in 2 steps that way right and likewise. So, you, you basically enumerate all pairs, all ij pairs right and then you look at the maximum entry and that is the diameter of the graph. So, for instance from here like if I were to go from 3 to 7. So, either I mean it would take 1, 2, 3, 4 and that is the diameter of the graph because from 2 like let us say from 2 to 7 if I were to reach I can go, go 2 to 1, 1 to 5 again 4 steps right. So, between any two pair of nodes or between any pair of nodes it will take at least 4 steps right for the information to propagate. So, diameter of the graph is so, graph diameter is equal to 4. In this case diameter is equal to 2 because you can reach from one node to any. So, diameter here is equal to 2 and likewise this diameter is not in I mean let us say I mean there are n nodes n minus 1 right. So, So, diameter is also a notion of uh, uh, basically it is also it also captures the notion of connectivity in the graph. So, how many steps it is going to take to propagate one piece of information from like between any two pair of nodes, but as you can see that we have to compare all n square possible combinations right. Is there a better way through which we can capture and it turns out yes. So, there is a result by uh, Brandon McKay which says that. that uh, the Fiedler value and it is not an equality kind of thing, but it gives you an idea for this is for connected graphs. So, the diameter is large then you generally expect I mean even though it is greater than equal to, but it is it is it I mean you can assume that this is fairly satisfies with equality. So, if the diameter is large then the Fiedler eigenvalue is going to be small and vice versa. So, for graphs which are well connected that means the diameter is small the Fiedler value is going to be large ok. So, uh, under it yes yeah. n is the number of edges uh, number of nodes ok. The other thing that we said about L is that Laplacian is positive semi definite. So, what does it mean? Lambda of any eigenvalue of L that should be greater than or equal to 0 right. So, let us try and prove this. So, if we were to show that this is positive semi definite then for any vector x. So, we have to show that x transpose L x this is greater than or equal to 0 right for positive semi definiteness ok. this is x transpose L x right. So, how can we show uh, positive semi definiteness? So, what property do we know about uh, Laplacian? It is symmetric and so let, so let me write it this way right. So, I can say and if you were to write 
L okay because somehow we want to use the fact that summation uh, summation of any row like sum of any row should be equal to 0 right okay so okay so what is this what is summation j 1 through n d d i j sorry d i j x j so d i j x j that is fine and and d i j is again going to be summation uh, summation a i j right so i think what we can show from here is by the way d i j is are non zero only if i equal to j right so this term is equal to x i square d i right and this i can again write this as this i can write as half x i square d i I can just use it uh, like because i is just a dummy variable or dummy note like dummy index I can write this as x j square d j okay minus so this turns out to be half because summation d i is I mean, di is nothing but summation a i j like summation j a i j. So, you can show that this is nothing but through an a i j x i minus x j whole square, which is greater than or equal to 0 and 0 on if and only if x i is equal to x j. So, so that means uh, 0 like this. So, for first of all, it is positive semi definite matrix, 0 is one of the eigenvalues uh, with the vector, I mean, with when, when x i is equal to x j for all i j. So, that means vector of 1s is one of the eigenvectors as well, right, if the graph is connected. So, that is that shows that uh, this particular order of eigenvalues and the smallest non zero eigenvalue is your Fiedler value, ok. In fact, you will see later that when we when we prove the convergence uh, of different distributed optimization algorithms, it, ac it actually depends on the Fiedler value, right. So, for instance, if I try to run a consensus here. It is much fa you, you can expect it is going to be much faster than running a consensus here right because then it the information would have to travel at least n minus 1 steps for you to be able to run any consensus here you can achieve consensus in 2 steps. So, your algorithms they are going to be dependent uh, this convergence rate of the algorithms are going to be dependent on the Fiedler value and that is something we are going to uh, be looking at in the uh, subsequent lectures.